Making manga is hard. For the past five years, I've been messing around in my room trying to teach myself how to make manga. So, this video exists to more or less point you in the right direction. Give you the bare bones advice that you need to make a manga of your own. Because if I don't have the time to commit to making my own weekly comic series, I feel like I should at least share some things that I've learned over the years with people like you, who want to learn how to make manga too. Every single topic in this video could easily be made into a very long video or video series of its own. And uh, we can't have that, now can we? So if there is anything in this video that you want me to go into more detail with, please let me know in the comments and I will gladly make a video to go into further detail. If they forced you to read Shakespeare back in high school, you know what a script looks like, okay? The purpose of a manga script is to just write down your story and write what the characters are supposed to be doing. So make sure you include where people are, like where the setting is in your script. It's helpful also to list what the characters are doing. And if you want to separate certain, if, if, if you want to separate what characters are saying in between speech bubbles, you can divide that with a little slash. That's what I do anyway. Don't draw anything until you've gotten your script done, because mine is about five pages. And since, well, this is not the first time I have drawn a manga, I know for me that a single page of script could be about four pages of manga. Okay, so next you're going to want to draw your storyboard, which is basically the blueprint for your manga. What you do is take your script and, well, draw a rough draft. And I stole an example from Bakuman to show off for, well, what are some ways you can draw your own storyboard. Up here we see Oba's storyboard. He is the author of Bakuman. And down here we have Obata's. He's the artist. And here is how the author had originally wanted the pages to look. And here's how the artist fixed it up in his own style. Now, the main difference between the two is that, well, it goes without saying that Obata's is a lot more detailed and refined, where Oba's is still very, very simplified, and he still left some guidelines here. Both are correct. In fact, I don't recommend drawing yours this detailed as Obata did, because, well, you're gonna waste a lot of time, and Obata is a drawing god, so he may do whatever he wants. <laughs> Here is an, uh, well, it's an example of mine. As you can see, I also go for the super duper simple version. Um, in this video, you're gonna see me draw page 20 here. And, um, yeah, as you can see, I don't even draw the full bodies. I don't even add the full face or, or the hair or anything like that, nothing. And as you will soon see, I don't even use the same exact poses I do here. Um, that's okay, because it's just a blueprint, just a rough draft, okay? Now, to make your own storyboard, I recommend getting a basic sheet of printing paper, folding it in half, and then drawing your panels on each side. Then you get four pages of storyboard per printing paper. That's how I do mine anyway. Okay, and so now that we have Clip Studio Paint open, Click File, New, and you'll see that you can create a webtoon comic or a comic comic. <laughs> now, the main difference between the two is that webtoon, the webtoon option is extremely long, which is ideal if you want to create a scrolling comic, and it automatically sets the color expression to color. <laughs> and as for the regular comic, it will... Well, first of all, it's gonna be a normal rectangle shape, and it'll set the expression color to monochrome, which is ideal if you're gonna do a traditional black and white comic. 
So I'm just gonna name this one Manga 20 because it is the 20th page. Now, there are quite a few page sizes, but to run it down for you real quick, A4 is the recommended size for beginners because as you can see here, they're small. Like A4 papers are small. That is less work for you. Trust me, when you're first starting out, you don't want a big paper because it's gonna be extra work. And extra work means it's gonna take more time. And yeah, no one wants that. You could also try the B4 size, which is what I use. It's also what professional mangaka use. But as you can see here, it's bigger. So keep that in mind. Click OK. Now, upon first opening your new page, you will notice that there are these strange rectangles. Now, first of all, don't worry about them. They will not show up once you export your page. But they are there as, we'll call them guidelines to make sure that you don't, hmm, to make sure that your page is print ready. Now, if you are printing your manga, this, little rectangle on the absolute outside don't draw anything at all in there or at least nothing of importance because it will get cut off during the printing process the smaller border right here that's kind of like your little bumper that's where you want to stop drawing so again nothing of importance in the little rectangle border there now the center rectangle um, that is where your reader's eyes are going to be focused. So you want to keep the most important stuff in the middle. And here, in the little other rectangle thing, you can draw whatever the heck you want. But again, main focus in the center. Now about those frames. There are three separate options to create frames. There's the frame border pen, which allows you to create custom shapes. I personally do not recommend that. Um, hmm. And there's also the polyline frame, which is good if you want to create uh, panel shapes that are, hmm, have the panel shapes that are interesting, more visually interesting. Um, Let's see, also, the frame that you're going to want to use, and the one that I use, is the rectangle frame. All you gotta do is just click and drag, and it will create a frame all on its own. You can copy my little number there, mine is at 40, and that just will, like, see, like, it's the thickness. It's the thickness. Make it 70. See, now it's thicker. But I like to keep mine at 40. There we go. Now, this is a fine shape, but to break it up into smaller panels, you're gonna have to go to cut frame border. Now, you, between the two options here, you're only going to want to use divide frame folder, and I'm gonna explain why in a second. So. Let's try the first dividing method. What that does is it will separate your panel into two separate ones that are in two completely different folders. So if I draw in this one, the one on the bottom, it will not go into the top one at all. Now, go back. You're gonna wanna use the last one if you want to separate your little panel into a bunch of smaller pieces, which it's different than the other way. Watch this. You can still draw in all of them, and they're going to be on the same layer, which is really useful if you want your readers to focus on a certain scene for a bit longer, because it'll force their eyes to linger. Now, for creating my page, looking off of my storyboard here, what I am going to do is this, this, and watch this. With control, you can, and then delete, you can get rid 
of a panel entirely, which is actually what I want. Now, I want another smaller rectangle panel right here. And if I do hold control, again, you can make your panels bigger and smaller. And this works for any of them. And it'll affect the surrounding frames too, which I think is very useful. I'm gonna make this one bigger actually for what I'm trying to do. There we go. Hmm. Now, before we start adding our little storyboard doodles onto this page, what I like to do first personally is add some speech bubbles. Now, you can use special rulers to create perfect circles. You can also use the balloon, balloon, balloon pen tool, which allows you to do that. And you can actually combine these two like this. If you wanna create a tail. Now, this is fine and dandy, but I don't like how it looks kind of perfect. So what I did was that I downloaded some G-Pen speech bubbles and I will show you why they're really cool. I just need to find the proper one. Okay. These are cool because as you can see, the line isn't perfectly smooth. I, I personally don't like manga art that's perfectly smooth. It's just me though. I'm just gonna resize this to what I need. And let's see. Let's do that for the other one too. There's not a lot of talking in this specific scene. So, oh yes, another thing is that, um, okay, I could have my speech bubbles like next to each other like this, but visually that's kind of boring. So I'm gonna leave it towards the bottom to really make the reader's eyes move around as they're reading, if that makes any sense. There we go. And now you can add the little drawings to your panels. And there we go. Just another reminder that when it comes to rough drafts with manga, you only need to add as much detail as you need in order to understand what is going on and so that you can eventually ink the final. And I will go over how to deal with overlapping panels and images in a bit. Just give me a little hot second. Now, on to inking. Or drawing the line. The, 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 drawing the line art. <clears throat> A cool trick that you can do to make your little rough draft easier to see when inking is to, first of all, tap the change layer color and it automatically sets it to blue. But you can set it to any color you want. And you know what? I think this time I want red. Yeah. And I also like to set mine to 50% opacity. It just makes it a bit easier for me to see it. Or see what I'm trying to draw. No blue, I want red. Give me a red. Thank you. We are doing red today, boys. And fifty. And fitty. Okay, there you go. Now your rough drafts are ready for inking. Now, a little tip from me is that, well, I prefer working on the simplest panels first because in my little brain, getting the fast work done faster makes it feel like I did a lot more than I actually did because I know that this image here and the one down here, that's gonna take a long time. So we're gonna do those last.
Okay, so now, as you can see here, the panel, it, well, it clips through the main drawing, which I want to be in the front. There is a really fast and easy way to do this. I like to change the paper color to make it easier for you to see what I'm about to do. Now, there is a separate layer here. Normal raster layer. Get your little bucket tool. Color white. And that was the wrong fill option. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay, but you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to do. Because you see how it covers the other panels too? Obviously, we don't want that. But let me do it just to the curls here. Whoops. Oh, see? It covers the panel right there. Now, let's do that to the rest of this character. And I think that's good. Let's change the paper color back to white. And you can't even tell. There we go. Now. We got our line art done. You know what comes next? Now, I'm pretty sure you were expecting me to say backgrounds, though. Here's the thing. I don't draw backgrounds, or at least when I do, like, I try to avoid drawing backgrounds whenever I can. Okay? Because backgrounds are hard. And one thing I've learned, and a thing that I've observed after reading quite a few different manga series, is that you don't need your art to be super complex or detailed for it to be good, if that makes any sense. You can get away with not drawing backgrounds in every panel. In fact, I don't recommend you do that in every panel, even if you could. And there are certain times where even your characters, you shouldn't be drawing your characters to look beautiful in pretty as possible every single page in every single panel like for example like right here i drew a very simplified version of my characters because the readers are not supposed to be focusing on that for too long it's supposed to be just a, a, we're supposed to be looking at them from far away whereas here and here it's more detailed because it's supposed to be a very serious scene and i, I use the term serious loosely because as you can see here she is not having any of his pretty boy act but you're gonna have to read it to see why. Also, while adding your screen tones, if you wanna, might wanna go back and add some little extra details to your drawing, because I believe I have forgotten to add specific details here. Oh dear, I cannot have that. <laughs> okay, now, let's start down here. In another video, I can go into more detail about how to choose the correct screen tones and how to use screen tones, but for now, this is just a quick tutorial video to show you the steps to create a manga page, so we're not going to be going over that here. Okay, I think that's decent for the uh, oh, screen tones for now. I might go back and change a few things, but now the last step, which is the most obvious step in making a manga page, is adding the words the. Now, if I could just change my color thingy back to black. Okay, now I'm using Lafayette Comic Pro. And that is a font that you can download online. I don't remember where I found it online, but it, it's easy to find. You got it. 
Now, just a little reminder, I am looking off of my storyboard while I'm typing out the speech bubbles. And another thing is that when trying to format your text with the speech bubble is that you gotta make sure it's in the center of the speech bubble. You cannot have it overlapping and it doesn't look right if it's like barely, like there's like, see how like it's so close? You don't want it very close. Trust me, it's not gonna look right. Just get that back to normal. And there we go. That is a finished page of manga. All you gotta do now is do that however many times you need until you get the amount of pages you need done. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, another little reminder while adding screen tones and stuff like that is um, it will affect the size of the drawing file, which is generally not very good. <laughs> because that means if you're going to upload your manga to sites like Pixiv or ManyBang Paint, it, you won't be able to upload the page file like at its full size, which is really annoying. So be careful when, uh, yeah, using screen tones and drawing things that are big. <laughs> Thanks for watching! That's it! That's how I make a manga page. My methods, though, are not the only correct way. So, feel free to experiment and just do whatever works for you. I will leave a link in the description to my manga project as soon as I get it uploaded online, of course. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Please, like and subscribe and join the Cheese Puffs! Bye!